It's been an especially deadly summer on Minnesota roads with more fatalities this year than we've seen in more than a decade. There's a big reason for the increase in traffic deaths, speeding. Proof that people are going too fast comes down to the numbers. At least 88 people have died this year due to speed related crashes. And through July 15th, state troopers have written more than 47,000 speed citations, including more than 600 tickets for drivers going over 100 miles per hour. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us what's being done to crack down on speeders. It seems like everyone is in a hurry these days. All that hustle and bustle includes lots of people driving over the speed limit. But we hear it all night long, and it is clear that they're revving up and they're speeding way past the speed limit. Maple Grove police are seeing a surge in speeding. They issued more than 800 citations for speeding-related offenses so far this year. I mean, we see speeding problems um, or issues uh, throughout the, the city, whether it's on Highway 610 or 94. 79, 80. Our CCX news team went along with the traffic unit as they patrolled Highway 610. Uh, red small car. Their radar caught one driver going 80 when the speed limit is 65. A few days ago, a Maple Grove officer clocked a driver going 105 miles per hour off 610 and Elm Creek Boulevard. There are enhanced penalties if you are going more than 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, and there are enhanced penalties if you exceed 100 miles per hour. Another problem area is this construction zone off 94. It's hard for police to crack down on speeders because there's no place to pull folks over. But that doesn't mean people are going to get away with speeding. You're not only putting yourself in danger and at risk, you're putting everybody else around you, and that's just not fair. There's a lot of families in this area. Sonia Goins, CCX News. Golden Valley's top cop will be retiring at the end of August. Chief Jason Sturgis has been with Golden Valley Police since 2004 and was named chief in 2015. During his time as chief, he rolled out an officer wellness program as well as tools to increase transparency, like a web-based dashboard to track police activity and body cameras too. COVID-19 cases are on the rise again. For students returning to school this fall, it will be up to the districts to decide what to do about masks. On Wednesday, the Minnesota Departments of Health and Education recommended everyone wear masks inside schools, regardless of vaccination status. The Anoka Hennepin District released its guidelines shortly after the announcement. The state's largest district will be recommending masks in schools, but not requiring them. Masks will be required on buses because that is a federal requirement. And as far as sports goes, the district will wait on direction from the Minnesota State High School League. Local schools are anything but quiet this summer as construction crews try to complete building projects. And you can see one of those projects at Rice Lake Elementary in Maple Grove. Crews are adding six classrooms in an effort to relieve overcrowding. The district hopes it's an addition that students and staff can get excited about. This six classroom addition is uh, more of what we call a collaborative design where um, classrooms can move from their classroom space into a common space in the middle and share that space with other students. There will also be an outdoor classroom, increased parking, plus a large gymnasium that's part of this project. The gym will serve as a storm shelter with enough room to hold every student in school if there's severe weather. A $12 million overhaul of a Maple Grove Park will now be delayed by a year due to increased construction costs. Delane Cleveland joins us now from Gleason Fields with more on this. Delane? One day, the Gleason Fields in Maple Grove will be a signature destination for youth baseball and softball tournaments. But anyone looking forward to that day will likely have to wait until the spring of 2023 before that becomes a reality. Pricing came in about 30% higher than uh, we anticipated. So we weren't funded enough for that, um, at least at that time. And so now we're going through a modification of the, of the design. The original design included building four ball fields with artificial turf to support youth baseball and fast pitch softball. The city would install LED lighting on each of the fields. The park would get a new concession stand and two of the ball fields would get upgraded seating. The city also planned other park improvements like a new playground and an 
expanded ice skating area. Now, Maple Grove has to figure out how to do this project for less. We're really trying to look at um, cost savings in building materials, things like that, um, and maybe downsizing some things a little bit, but uh, you know, we really need to deliver a baseball complex and a nice neighborhood park. So uh, I think we'll hit that target, but there may be some changes from the original design, but still very nice. The city hopes to have all the decisions made on the modifications by the end of the year, and the plan is to rebid the project early next year. Meanwhile, the city did receive some good news this month. The city of Maple Grove will receive a $300,000 youth sports grant from Hennepin County to help pay for the project. In Maple Grove, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. There's a celebration this weekend for a newly rebuilt park near the Mississippi River. River Park has been closed to the public since last September. Now with work completed, there's a new walking loop with trail connections, a large new picnic area, and improved water access. There's been uh, restoration to our uh, nature area on the other side of the park, a scenic overlook that's been added, as well as four fishing piers, a kayak, and paddle share area built to make it a little bit easier to get your kayak or your if you want to do a rental for the paddle share down into the river. The total cost for the renovations came in slightly over three million dollars. A ribbon cutting celebration with music and food trucks is planned for 11 a.m. on Saturday.